What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So I hope you guys are all staying safe and having an awesome weekend so far. I believe this video is going up on Sunday. So you guys can tell from the title of the video, it's going to be a real estate video talking about my current two rental properties that I have in Phoenix, Arizona. I know I, I've gotten a lot of DMs and then even a few comments on my YouTube videos. Like people, people wanting me to go into a little bit more detail on my two rental properties, talking more about the financials and just actually like the money going into it and the money that I'm making each month, the cash flow on it, how much I spent on the properties, how much I bought them for, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys are interested in this video, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And if you guys just aren't in the real estate at all, you guys can go ahead and skip this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. For those of you guys that don't know, a little bit of backstory. I bought my first rental property, I think I closed on it July 3rd or July 3rd of 2019 which was just about eight months ago here and then I closed on my second rental property literally down the street from my first one uh, last month a month and a half ago February 5th or 6th I believe I closed on it and I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about how much I put down on it my interest rate and how much I'm making each month on these two properties so we're gonna start with my first property this property is right across the street from Grand Canyon University and the main reason why I bought my first property is strictly for the location when I went to look at properties here in Arizona I wanted something that was near a university so I can do it as a student house because I knew student rentals if you rent it per room you can actually make a lot more money as opposed to renting the whole house to like a family and that's actually what ended up happening with not only my first property but my second property as well so I actually have they're both four bedroom houses I actually have eight individual leases on them one for each individual bedroom so it's that part's a little bit stressful but had the, how, the amount of money each month more I'm making as opposed to renting it to two families is quite a bit so I will talk about that a little bit later but I bought my first property for two hundred and nine thousand and nine hundred dollars so we're gonna round up to two hundred and ten thousand to make it easier for those of you guys that don't know a lot about like the, the loans and stuff like that, since it was an investment property, uh, in order for me to get a loan on it, I had to put 20% down. So if you guys wanna do the math on that, with closing costs, I actually have my laptop right here where I have all the financials for both my properties. So with the closing costs on that property, like getting the inspection, getting the appraisal, all that kind of stuff, and the down payment, I ended up putting down $50,000 pretty much exactly, give or take like a few hundred dollars. And I have $165,000 that I owe to the bank on this property, which makes my mortgage each month, my mortgage is how much I'm basically paying each month to have that house is $994. And that includes insurance and taxes on the property. So basically each month I'm paying about $1,000 for this property. Now we're going to the, to, the, to the good stuff, how much I'm making on this property. So I found a four female students from Grand Canyon University and I rented two of the rooms that have bathrooms for $475 a month and then I rented the two smaller rooms for $425 a month. So if you guys want to do the math on that, it equals out to $1,800 a month. So $1,800 minus the $1,000 I owe is a cash flow of $800 a month I am making into my pocket. Now that's not exact because I have some expenses. I have to keep up the yard work on it so I have to hire someone for that. I have to pay the water bill. I have to pay the trash bill and for some reason I told them I was gonna pay for Wi-Fi so that's another like 60 bucks a month I have no idea why I did that and why I offered to pay for their Wi-Fi it was it's an extra like $700 a year that I didn't have to do but I got stuck with that because I added it to the lease so averaging out I'll even show you guys this right here this is all I made the August I actually didn't have um, mortgage on it so I actually made a little bit more but it averages out to about six hundred and like fifteen dollars a month on average I've been making on this some months are a little bit lower because some months I have a little bit more issues I have to send like a plumber over there and some months are a little bit higher than six hundred I think my highest month was like seven hundred just over seven hundred dollars a month some of the expenses that I had to pay to have it move in ready. This was pretty much move in ready. There was a family that was already living there, so there wasn't anything that like really big that needed to be fixed. So I can pretty much move those tenants in. And I did move those tenants in within like three weeks, which I'm really, really grateful for. I had a really quick turnaround on finding tenants and they qualified for it and everything like that. So and there wasn't a lot of downtime of me paying the mortgage on this property. I actually didn't have any downtime on it. So I had to buy a washer and dryer and I had to buy a fridge. And that's pretty much it on this property. So all in on this property, I'm about $53,000 with my 20% down. I have an interest rate of 4.5% for those of you guys that are interested on it, which is pretty good for an investment property. It's a little bit higher if you have an investment property as opposed to a house that you actually buy and then live in yourself because the banks, they just charge a little bit more because it's more of a risk, risk to them that you won't pay 
year mortgage on a property you actually don't live in. Where was I going with that? Um, yeah, $53,000 in and I'm making about $615 to $650 a month, which is about, I think, what is that, like $600, like seven seventy two hundred dollars a year i think or something on that um my tenants have paid all on time on this everything's been like super super smooth with this property i'm very very happy with it this this property my my first property i bought it's like my baby there hasn't been a whole lot of problems with it it was move-in ready everything like was pretty much ready to go so now we're moving into my second property. This property came on the market when I was actually in Los Angeles, so I never even saw the property before I purchased it, which is something that I kind of regret doing. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but this was kind of, I wouldn't say a spontaneous buy. Uh, the numbers look good on it, but I just wish I would have done a little bit more due diligence on it before I actually put in an offer and actually got the property. So this one is a four bedroom, two bathroom. My first property is a four bedroom, three bathroom. They are pretty much the same square footage. They're 14 houses a Part, so it was pretty easy for me to get an idea on how much I can buy this house for and still get a good deal for it because my first property is pretty much identical to it. So I ended up getting this one for just under $200,000, $199 thousand five hundred dollars now the difference between this property and my first one is this property was owned by an investor for 10 years and it wasn't really taken care of like this the the, the investor knew what he was doing and like it kind of sucks but he pretty much just put a bunch of lipstick on and he painted it he put granite countertops in but on the on the back end of things there's a lot of issues that you wouldn't really see from the pictures which is wish which is when i wish i would have went and actually saw it and inspected it really really good i I don't know if I would still be owning that house if I had done that. Um, there's just been a lot of extra work that I didn't foresee. $200,000 for this house, and since this was my second rental property, I actually had to put a little bit more down payment on it in order for the banks to give me that loan. So this property was 25% down, or one quarter of the entire house, which ended up being with closing costs. This one was a pretty pricey one for sure. I'm a lot of money under this house. $56,276 out of my pocket just to get it. Now that is before all the repairs I've had to do for this freaking property property here. So some of the repairs I had to buy a fridge. A lot of real estate or a lot of properties here don't come with fridges so you obviously have to buy that if you're going to rent it out. Uh, so I bought a fridge. I bought a washer dryer obviously. Those are a couple grand uh, in total. I actually, I actually bought an oven as well because the oven they had in there was probably 30 years old so it wasn't even working. I had to replace some doors. I had to replace some hardware. I had to do some refurbishing in the rest in the bathroom. Um, a little bit of plumbing stuff, a little bit of wall stuff. Nothing with the AC, it was all like brand new. So in total with renovations on this, I'm about $10,000 on top of my 56. So right now I'm about $67,000 into this property out of my pocket and this is the very first month it's getting rented. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to actually get my money back into this property but both of these properties I plan on keeping for some time and in, I bought these properties strictly for cash flow so it's not like I'm trying to flip this real quick and sell it which I'm going to talk about because the current coronavirus right now has affect this has affected this property big time. So I actually as of yesterday today's like April 3rd as of April 1st it was my tenant's first day in the property and three of the four girls lost their job due to the coronavirus so I actually had to I'm working with them right now in order for them to pay me a little bit later. I I'm obviously not going to force them to pay me rent if they don't have the money because they lost their jobs a couple weeks ago. So I actually am losing money on this property right now. I'm actually $500 a month in the negative until they actually catch up with payments. I fully believe these girls, they qualify. They all had jobs before all this happened, so I didn't foresee any of this, but it's just it's just a crazy situation right now. So until they get jobs again, until they start paying me again, I'm actually going to be negative $500. Um, we did talk about how they're going to pay me back. We can either add a little bit of monthly rent into the rest of their lease or we can just give them, they want to do like once they get their stimulus checks, for those of you guys that know what those are, you're basically getting $1,200 from the government because of this whole crisis. Uh, we agreed for them to pay me out of that once they get the check. So that'll be fairly straightforward, I'm hoping. Now, since I put more down on this house, I put more at 25% down. My mortgage is actually lower. And my mortgage on this house is $906. To make it a round number, we're gonna go $900. And I'm renting each room, four bedrooms, for $438. Since all the rooms are pretty much identical in this property, they're all the same amount of rent. My other, my first property down the street, uh, two of the rooms are like bigger, they have their own bathrooms and stuff, so I did charge a little bit more and I charge a little bit less for the smaller rooms, but this, this house right here is pretty much all the same, so they're all 438, which makes my monthly rent 
and my monthly income on this property is $1,752. So $1,752, $1,752 minus $900 is $850 a month. Now keep in mind I have water, I have trash that I have to pay for, so my guess is I'm going to probably cash flow about on the low end, $750 to $775 a month on this property. Now if you add $615 to $775, I don't know how much that is, it's probably right around $1,400 a month um, and I'm making from these properties, which is like eighteen, it's like sixteen to $18,000 a year on these properties. That are, it's actually going into my pocket after all expenses, after all repairs and stuff like that, averaged out obviously. I, I might have to replace something huge down the road. So I always have an emergency fund for these properties. I have separate bank accounts for both of these. I have my personal bank account, I have my business bank account, and then I have a bank account for my first property, a bank account for my second property. So every time I get rent, it's going into that separate bank account. Every time I have a repair, it's coming out of that bank account. So I don't don't really mix any of my my accounts it's just easier for me to like think about that and know how much money I'm making and for this specific property here like I said my second house it just got rented out so it's just gonna be a matter of time before I start realizing if stuff needs to be repaired or how the tenants are doing and stuff like that so I may make a follow-up video if you guys are interested on that but overall guys I am invested about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in total with like the down payments repairs closing costs all that stuff on these properties and every year I'm making about eighteen thousand dollars obviously there's some things like I said in the prior there's some things that I wish I would have looked for before I bought the second property I had to replace the windows on that I had to replace a gate on that uh, there's some, like I said, some bathroom stuff, so it definitely needed a little bit of work and you can tell that an investor had rented that house out for a long time because it was just like, it was just like the lipstick stuff. Like I wouldn't be able to move my tenants in right away. Like that needed some, some repairs before it was in a livable condition. Although it looked like it was ready to go because he just touched it up. It definitely needed some back end stuff on it. That's, that's why you do your due diligence before you buy a property. You want to know who you're buying it from, what the purpose they had it for, is it, well, did they just flip it, did they have it for four months and just flip it? Because if, if that's the situation, then you really want to look for some stuff that they just like put a little band-aid on and just trying to sell it. Um, a lot of the stuff at my second property, that's what he did, he kind of just like patched it up a little bit and just try to give it away to someone. And that's pretty much it guys, I don't know if I'm missing anything big. My interest rate on my second property is 4.49% as well, which I'm really happy with. They're like 14 houses down from each other, so I can literally walk, it's a 45 second walk. They're both right by Grand Canyon University. And that brings me to my last point here. Uh, long term, what my goal is for these properties, strictly cash flow. I just want to cash flow and I'm not trying to sell it. But an end goal, like a, like a dream of mine would be to have GCU or Grand Canyon University buy me out for like a premium price. They've been buying land all across my houses for the last like five years and they've just been growing their campus. So I do have a feeling eventually they're gonna expand into residential, but right now they're trying to wait out for it and they're trying to build on the land they already bought. So down the road it would be ideal to like get cash flow for 10, 15 years on this and then sell it to them for like a premium price and just kind of win-win on both of those on the actual appreciation of the property and cash flow on it. So that's it guys. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really do appreciate it. If you guys have any questions or if I missed anything that you guys wanna know, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer it. Drop a like on this video. It really, really does help me out guys. I really do appreciate it. It. The next property I want to get, I think I want to have like a nice family, a family neighborhood, like a nice family in there where it's, there's not a lot of stress, there's not a lot of issues on the property. Like I want a newer property. These two properties I have are over 50 years old, so there's obviously going to be more issues than one that's 10, 15 years old. So uh, my next, my third property, which I, I do want to get hopefully by the end of this year, I want to have more of like a family, family neighborhood. I get a nice family in there, have someone live there four or five years at one time rather than like with students, like I'm constantly like having to try to find new students in it and they're gonna, they're only on a year lease and they're probably gonna rotate every single year. So like I constantly have to be on top of finding new tenants and stuff with like student rentals as opposed to getting a family in there where they're set for like three, four, five, six years and I don't have to worry about it at all. It's just consistent cash flow every single month. My tenants pay me via Venmo. It's super, super simple. I got them all on a 12 month lease. Both my houses are filled with females. So I have eight different leases, eight, eight different female tenants on there. Yeah, hopefully everything runs smoothly still and I'll see you guys in the next video.